Welcome to this Sunday's service from St. Columbus Church in Ennis County Clare with the churches of Kilnasula and Christ Church Spanish Point. Harvest, at least for the older generation, can still evoke some of those long past nostalgic memories of long summers, fields ripening in the sun, a time of school assemblies singing hymns, playing conkers in the playground, a time when we felt more at peace with nature and perhaps as a result, more at peace with ourselves. But now, and only recently, we have frightened ourselves. In our thoughtlessness and arrogance, we are swiftly destroying our very home. We once thought of ourselves as the masters of nature. But now we even seem to lack the ability to master ourselves. What can be done? And who is to do it? And so we start our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are the never-ceasing open gift of love we turn in upon ourselves. Lord, have mercy. You live beyond all centers of power. We seek to enclose your grace. Christ, have mercy. You rejoice in a multitude of names. We try to pin you down. Lord, have mercy. May the power of heaven protect us this day and circle us with the blessing of peace. May Christ, our Lord and loving friend, protect us this day and circle us with affection and love. May the Spirit of Truth, who dwells in our hearts, protect us this day and circle and fill us with joy. Amen. And so we pray. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness and give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory, for the relief of those in need, and for our own well-being. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Joel. Do not fear, O soil. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine give their full yield. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God. He has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain as before. The threshing floor shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, 
Even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Here ends the reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The word harvest originally comes from the Old English harefest, meaning autumn. Later it came to refer to the season for reaping and gathering grain and whatever else was grown on the land. An early harvest festival used to be celebrated at the beginning of the harvest season on the 1st of August and was called Lamas, meaning loaf mass. The Latin prayer to hallow the bread was given in a book called the Durham Ritual. Farmers made lo large loaves of bread from the freshly collected wheat, which were given to the local church to serve as the communion bread for a special service to thank God for the harvest and the assurance that there was food enough for the winter. Until the latter part of the 20th century, many farmers used to celebrate the end of the harvest with a big meal called the Harvest Supper, to which all who had helped in the gathering of the harvest were invited. Perhaps the tradition still lives on in some family farms. I'd, I'd like to think so. The modern Anglican tradition of celebrating harvest festival in churches began in 1843 when the Reverend Robert Hawker invited parishioners to a special thanksgiving service at his church at Morwenstow in Cornwall. Victorian hymns such as We Plough the Fields and Scatter, Come Ye Thankful People Come, and All Things Bright and Beautiful, but also Dutch and German harvest hymns translated into English, helped popularize his idea of harvest festival and spread the annual custom of decorating churches with homegrown produce for the harvest festival service. Of course, that was in the time when in England and Ireland we had a single annual harvest, when the whole community would pitch in, literally get out their pitchforks and lend a hand. The seasons would be changing and people would be storing up the summer produce to last them through the winter, knowing that certain foods might not be available again until next year came round. And so we were used to eating foods that were in season. We would look forward to the time when certain crops became available, when certain meals would appear on our tables. Certain special treats such as strawberries suddenly became available for a while and we accepted when the food we had laid by was all gone for the year. For we knew we couldn't always have what we wanted when we wanted. And harvest, at least for the older generation, can still evoke some of these long past nostalgic memories of long summers, fields ripening in the sun, a time of school assemblies singing hymns, perhaps playing conkers in the playground, a time when we felt more at peace with nature and maybe as a result more at peace with ourselves. Some memories may even be of times before our own, but not so long before and handed down to us by the grown-ups of our day. Harvest represented a continuity, something of the long past that still reached into our present. Of course, all that has now changed through the supermarkets, we can pretty much get what we like 
whenever we like. And neither are we limited to what was produced locally. The shelves of our shops teem with products from around the globe. Spices, once more expensive than gold, now season our meals every day. Preserved and even fresh ingredients from thousands of miles away are simply seen as a part of our regular diet as we eat meals inspired by all cultures of the world. And we are ever hungry for the new and the novel. In many ways, that's a wonderful thing. It seems that every year some mundane food is transformed by celebrity chefs and home cooks alike into something delicious and exciting. The quality and freshness of our food is something that previous generations and even our own younger selves would have marveled at. We enjoy the cultural diversity that goes with new people and new foods and our planet seems to shrink each year as every corner becomes accessible and available. But like most things in life, we have paid a price. On the one hand, the exchange of one harvest a year for multiple harvests across the year has disconnected us, the consumer of food, from its production. We simply take for granted that food will always be available without much of a thought for how it came to us, how and where it was grown, how the farmers live, who carries it on the roads, the ships, the plains. It is just there for us to buy. And on the other hand, in church, we too can feel a little disconnected. We still keep the harvest. The church is decorated as usual, but we can have the troubling feeling that it is not quite the celebration it was. The tone is somewhat more muted because in the midst of all this plenty, we have become rather disquieted. Can it last? Should it last? What is the price that we shall have to pay? Once we thought we could act as we wanted. The world was so vast, we thought it could soak up anything we could meet out. We could mine what we desired, excavate as we wanted, exploit as we wanted, discard as we wanted, turn forests into fields, plough entire regions for a single crop, spray chemicals as we saw fit. We could transport delicate colonies of bees across an entire continent as we needed, take whatever fish we demanded from the vastness of the ocean, and surely there would always be more. The world would always take it and still gives us whatever we want. But now, and only recently, we have frightened ourselves. Nature is not invulnerable. Neither are we masters of it. In our thoughtlessness and arrogance, we are swiftly destroying our very home, and despite our increasing trepidation, we seem to lack the ability to even master ourselves. Whilst environmental summits year on year warn us of impending points of no return, some of us attempt to refute the evidence to extract just a little bit more profit for just a little bit longer. The rest of us look to our politicians to lead us into meaningful change. Greta Thunberg has recently accused governments such as the UK, the US and China as being in denial over the climate and ecological crisis. Even the Queen of England, not known for sensationalism, has recently voiced her frustration at individuals who talk but don't do. But doesn't the problem exist partly because our leaders know us only too well? For if we look to them, they also look back at us and cannot see the true commitment and resolve necessary 
to make the radical and painful changes in our own lives that will turn us back from the brink. They fear for their own political lives because we still lack the will to save our own. Just how many more disasters do we need before we are prepared to change? Do they have to happen to us rather than to other people before we are willing to give up on our addiction to on-demand plenty, before it is too late? In church, we love to speak of salvation, although all too often we don't really know what that means. And we rarely as Christians live out the radical repentance to which we are called. Perhaps in our present time, far removed from the nostalgia of the past, our planet is now pointing out to us as powerfully as it can the consequences of our sin in ways that are real and urgent and which threaten our very survival and in ways that we can no longer ignore if we wish to have any kind of future at all. The churches are only recently awakening to the danger and we cannot afford the time it usually takes people to adjust to a new idea before they are willing to accept that it is true, let alone act upon it. There is this human tendency to prefer to be wrong with everyone else rather than right on one's own. But the churches and individual Christians simply must now take a lead in our world and show the way. We cannot wait for the security and comfort of doing what everyone else wants to do anyway. If we truly believe in salvation, then we need to start acting as agents of salvation of our planet, of the human race and the whole created order. And then perhaps one day, once again, we shall keep harvest as we so fondly remember, as a celebration of God's gift of this good earth and our contented and gentle place upon it. Amen. We are pilgrims along the way of life. Therefore, let us remind ourselves of the path of faith that has brought us to this time and place. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith, and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now pray for our church, for ourselves and neighbours, and for the needs of the whole world. Let us pray for our world and all the people in it as we celebrate the harvest. We are thankful for the good things that have come to us. We may not plough the fields, but we have been busy all year. Whether in workshops or at the office, the shop, the kitchen, the community or the classroom, and in these strange days working from our homes. Our achievements have been both great and small, but all are of value, and we thank God for them. Christ be with us, around and beside us. We pray for those for whom there is no harvest, those who have no work or who are dispossessed by acts of war or natural disaster. We pray for all those for whom life is a struggle against starvation, disease, terror or oppression. We pray for the wisdom to husband the earth's resources wisely and to protect them for the next generation. Christ be with us, around and beside us. 
We pray for our church, its clergy and its leaders, that they may be faithful, diligent and humble of heart. May they lead us into a greater understanding of our world and our impact upon it. Help us to repent of our contribution to climate change and be prepared to make the urgent changes that are necessary such that our lives may be simpler and less harmful to our planet. Christ be with us, around and beside us. We pray for the sick in body and mind, and for those who care for them. May they be comforted and strengthened in their troubles. We pray especially for any known to us who are in special need of our prayers at this time. We remember them now and lift them to the Lord. We remember before God those who have died, those who grieve the loss of loved ones, and we hold before you all those we have loved and lost. You turn our darkness into light. In your light shall we see light. Christ be with us, around and beside us. Now a few moments for our own concerns and prayers for those on our hearts. Together we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. The power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. May the soft winds of heaven refresh your spirit and sunshine brighten your heart. May the burdens of the day rest lightly upon you. May God enfold you in love and may the blessing of God the Holy Trinity 
bringing peace beyond all understanding, be with you and remain with you and all those whom you love, now and forever. Amen. Let's go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.